what a privilege, what a joy, and what an opportunity for us to connect on Faith Nation Television. What a blessing it is to get such a wonderful time that we will share together today God's Word and it's going to bless your life. Glory be to God. Now, I just want to make this announcement to you that this is our very first video uh, with our new equipments of our studio. We're still building. And so I'm so excited of what the Lord is doing. And so I know you are excited as well. So please know this is a trial. A very first uh, TV, Faith Nation TV new equipments. And I'm telling you, much more is on the way. God bless you. And today, I just want to share the Word of God with you. And I believe this is going to bless your heart. And we're going to share from the book of uh, Genesis chapter 3, verse number 8. And I'm going to be talking to us today about face to face with God face to face with God. All right. So Genesis chapter three, verse number eight is where we're going to get started from. And so let us pray before we can get into the scriptures. Father, in Jesus name, I thank you for my viewers right now. I thank you that the spirit of the living God is with us as we connect this way. Let the presence of the Holy Spirit minister to each and every one of us. We thank you for your glorious presence in our midst today. Lord, as I shared the word, let the spirit of grace minister to each and every one of us. We are waiting on you, Lord God, to show us that which you desire concerning us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. All right, let's go. Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. All right, so this is um, Adam's story. Uh, the Bible says that, it came to pass that at some point, um, as God always visited the Garden of Eden where uh, Adam and Eve were, the Bible says on this particular day, God came in the cool of the day to visit Adam and Eve. But the Bible says, but when he came to the garden, Adam and Eve had hidden themselves. And the Lord called out and he said, Adam, Adam, where are you? And Adam did not respond. It was like, you know, you think you respond and say to the Lord, here I am, like all the time, because God was his friend. And any time of the day, he will visit him in the cool of the day and spend some time in the Garden of Eden. But apparently this time was different. And any time that he heard God speak, he will then meet the Lord and they will have relationship, fellowship, time together, as they always had. But now, on this particular day, it wasn't so. When God called out, Adam, Adam, where are you? Adam responded and said, I'm hiding. They hid away from the presence of God. Now, that is a very, very powerful question in the scriptures. Because when God was asking Adam, where are you? God was not really asking the physical condition, the, the physical position of where Adam was, because God can see anywhere and everywhere. So God was literally talking to Adam about his spiritual position. Adam, I left you in my presence. I left you in the garden. We had a connection. We had a relationship. We had a fellowship together. But now, where are you? Because I cannot find you. And so, brothers and sisters, I believe the greatest, um, the greatest uh, 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 goal of a Christian life is to behold the face of God. 
I believe that the highest goal of Christian life is to behold the face of God. We call this word, um, uh, it's a Latin word, coram deo. Coram deo simply means uh, in the presence of God. As followers of Christ, we are to live our lives in coram deo. That means in the presence of God, under the authority of God, for the glory of God. Okay, so when we talk about face to face with God, we are literally talking, this is an idiom which simply means um, and, uh, uh, intimately, okay, or oh, Moses spoke with God familiarly. So in other words, there was an intimate relationship. There was familiarity in terms of like Moses knew God and God knew Moses. And so as a man speaks to a friend, that's what the Bible says. And that means Moses had that relationship at all the time. Okay, he spoke to, to God face to face. That's what the Bible says in the book of, um, uh, and we're going to look at this in just a moment. Uh, Psalms, no, uh, literally Deuteronomy. Let, let's go to the, the one in Deuteronomy, the chapter is 34 verse 10. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 10, and I'm going to read it from NET. The Bible says, no prophet ever again arose in Israel like Moses, who knew the Lord face to face. Now, this is an incredible statement. No prophet in Israel who rose again, who knew God face to face. What is he telling us? Did that mean that Moses always, um, you know, had face and fa face to face talk with God? This literally means uh, he had intimate connection with God. He had a communion with God. He had a sh sharing together with God. He literally spoke to God in a familiar way. So he knew God and God knew, knew him. So when we talk about face-to-face -face experience, we're talking about experiencing God in your life on a daily basis. Every day, in the cool of the day, God also visited Adam. And Adam had face-to-face -face experience with God, where he had a rapport, he talked to God, and God talked to him in the garden. And so we realize that the greatest goal that God has for us as his children, as his creation, is to have a relationship with God. My brothers and sisters, anybody, uh, you know, that you, you, you're not watching this by accident. You got to understand how important a relationship with God is. I'm not talking about a relationship with the church. I'm not talking about being religious. A lot of people are so religious, but they don't have a relationship with God. A lot of people are churchgoers, but they don't have a relationship with God. And this is what I'm talking about, face-to-face -face experience with God. You must have that. I'm not talking about your parents introduce you to a church when you are younger, or when you are young, or when you are a child. They took you into a church, you got baptized or you got blessed and, or confirmed, whatever word you may use. And then when you grew up, you started going to church and you thought you had a relationship with God. I believe a relationship with God, it's a personal thing. Nobody can really uh, introduce that to you. They can introduce you to the Lord, but nobody can bring that bring you to that relationship with God it is you to seek the Lord and the Bible says as you seek the Lord he can be found or he will be found now let me show you another scripture over here very quickly in the book of uh, uh, and I'm, I'm also reading from amplified version again <clears throat> and we're gonna look at this scripture wonderful scripture here that is going to bless your heart. Uh, the book of Psalm chapter 17, we're going to look at verse number 15. The Bible says, as for me, I will continue beholding your face 
in righteousness, right, righteous, righteous justice and right standing with God, with you. I shall be fully satisfied when I awake to find myself beholding your form and having sweet communion with you. So, brothers and sisters, do you realize that face to face here means communion with the Lord? And so, David, he said, as for me, I will continue beholding your face in righteousness. In other words, my righteousness which actually comes from you, gives me the right standing with you. And that makes me to have a relationship with you every time I wake up and I rise in the morning. And he says, that relationship, that communion with you, Lord, gives me satisfaction. Brothers and sisters, there is never anything in this world that will give you 100% satisfaction. Only God does that. And that's why you may have all the money in the world. You may have all the things, material things in this world. But nothing can give you 100% satisfaction. I'm not saying that you cannot be satisfied fully uh, with, you know, material things. There, there is a, a kind of a level of satisfaction that you may have. But that is not really a full 100% satisfaction. Nothing materially in this world can give you 100% uh, satisfaction. Only God can do that. And so, brothers and sisters, that's why David, in all his, you know, authority as a king and some, someone who had really encountered many things in life and many pleasures of life and luxuries and, you know, good life, he still said, as for me, I continue beholding your face. He felt nothing else in this world is more important than beholding the face of the Lord. And that means having a day-to-day -day relationship with God. My brothers and sisters, my friends, I want to ask you a question today. When did you first have that time with the Lord? Do you have moments of prayer? Do you have moments where you can have a talk, a relationship with the Father? Do you pray? Do you find that communion with the Lord? You know, I believe where there is no communication, always um, there is no relationship. Because if there has to be a relationship, there has to be communication. For example, I love my wife and she loves me. And if I have not talked to her maybe for the whole day, I feel something is weird. You know, whenever we don't like communicate. Why is that? Because we have a relationship and we know each other very well. And that's why we, I'll, I'll feel weird, she feels weird, if we didn't have that time to communicate. Our communication is what builds our relationship. My brothers and sisters, when we pray, prayer helps us to build our relationship with God. It helps us to bring us to a place of face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord. Do you have that face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord? Do you talk to Him every day? Do you find time to commune with Him as a friend? I remember many years ago, uh, Pastor Benny Hinn, uh, you know, he wrote a wonderful book called Good Morning Holy Spirit. Very powerful. And he said every morning he woke up, he had that, um, you know, revelation where the Holy Spirit revealed Himself to him. And every morning he woke up, he said, welcome Holy Spirit or good morning Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will show up in the room or the Holy Spirit presence will show up in the room and he will commune with him for hours. And even at times when he would want to leave the room, the Holy Spirit will speak to him and he say, please stay a little bit more, stay a little bit longer. My brothers and sisters, that is a true relationship with God. That is what I'm talking about, face to face with God. Do you have that? When was the last time you heard this voice? 
Do you recognize his voice? How does he sound like? My brothers and sisters, we need to get to that place where we understand how important it is to have a face-to-face -face encounter with God. It's not about you going to church because everybody goes to church. But don't be deceived that everybody goes to church as, as a relationship with God. There are many people who go to church just for formality. Others go to church just because they feel, um, well, it's a Sunday and I need to find a place where I can pass time. And others have true relationship with God. And others have a relationship with the church or their pastor and, or their friends. And so they use the church as a club where they can meet with their friends. Listen to me. Something got to change in our lives. We need to build a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord every day. Just like Adam and the Lord visit him at the cool of the day, you too can experience that. And that is the very most, the foremost goal that God had from the very beginning. Coram Dio, the face-to-face -face with the presence of God. When you have that every day, you build a stronghold of the anointing. You build a stronghold of power and God will use you tremendously in this world. I give you a lot, another quick story about somebody um, that I count to be one of my, my heroes of faith, Smith Wigglesworth. He lived in the, here in the United Kingdom in Bradford. Now, Smith Wigglesworth was a man who had a great relationship with God. His book tells us that Smith Wigglesworth spent, spent 15 minutes every hour to talk to God. And he, he left his house, walked for 15 minutes every hour, talking to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit talking to him. And God used Smith Wigglesworth mightily in the power of the anointing. He raised so many people, about 19 people from the dead. That is a dead man. Because, I mean, you can never do some of these miracles unless yourself you're dead. And when I'm talking about dead or death, I'm talking about being so much connected to God, having such a close relationship with God that you don't care about the, the natural world or you don't care about anything else in this world. You are completely sold out to God. You're given out to completely coram deal, face-to-face -face experience with the Father. Everybody needs that. Don't tell me I go to church. Jesus is returning back very soon. Do you know him? Do you have that relationship with him? It is so important to have that on a daily basis. On second after second, you must have that. And I'm telling you, that will break will bring a great blessing in your life. Today, if you're here today and you're, you're watching me and you say, Bishop, I don't know where to begin. Listen, there's no formula on how to begin to have to build this relationship with God. All you need to do, get onto your knees and say, Holy Spirit, come and dwell in me. Come and build a relationship with me and begin to talk to him just like you talk to a friend. Desire to build a, a, a continuous, um, a consistent uh, talk with him. And when you do so, I bet you're going to experience the presence of the Holy Spirit. Use the Bible as your connection to him. Take the scriptures. Read the scriptures quietly. Find a quiet place every day where you can just study the Word of God, where you can just read the Scriptures. And as you do so, there will be a transformation power of the Holy Spirit that will begin to speak on the inside of you. And soon or later, God will begin to speak to you through the Scriptures. God will begin to speak to you through even a voice. And you'll begin to hear incredible things from the presence of the Holy Spirit. Today I want to pray with someone that you're saying, Bishop, pray with me. I need to start this relationship with God. 
Now, I want to pray and ask the Lord to help you to get started. It's never too late to get started. You may say, I've been three months away from his presence. I do not behold his face. I don't have a face-to-face a face, a face -face encounter with him. That can restart or that can begin again today. Let me pray with you. Dear Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for my friends and partners that are watching me right now. And I ask you, Lord, meet each and every one of them at the point of their need. They are calling on your name, Lord God. Hear them and respond to their cry. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you've done it right now. And they are just about to start a new journey with you. Holy Spirit, have your way in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And listen to me, if you're not born again, you're not a Christian, you don't know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can start this relationship with him. As simple as that. All you need to do is to say this prayer after me. Just go down on your knees right now. Maybe you're watching this on your tele. Just go down on your knees and say these words after me. Say, dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I recognize that. And I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I believe Jesus came and he was crucified. He died for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead for my justification. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for changing my life. I am now born again, child of the Most High God. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you just said that prayer, listen, you started a brand new relationship and journey with the Lord Jesus. Your life from this day will never be the same again. Let me tell you something that you can do to help yourself not to grow in the things of God. Get a Bible, read it every day. Start from the book of John because it will reveal Jesus to you. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to lead you every day. Don't try to lead yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to lead you every day. Number three, pray. Talk to God, just like you talk to your friends. Number four, find a church that you can be able to fellowship with other brethren. And number five, tell someone else your experience with Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thank you for opening your heart to the Lord. And God bless you, everybody, and I'll see you soon again right here at Faith Nation TV. God bless. Yeah, I just wanted to do a short one, but yeah, <laughs> I wanted to do a short one, but yeah. The internet was bad? Yeah. Really? Oh. We need to do a miracle very quickly. We need to try.